Sometimes the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but when it comes to superheroes with supervillain parents, generally this couldn't be further from the truth. Although they do come with a lot of baggage. Is there a phrase about apples that have lots of emotional trauma? Welcome back, Nerd Squad. I'm your host, Josh Busker. And I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Today we'll be counting down the top 10 most powerful superheroes with supervillain parents. Let's get into it. Number 10, Spoiler. Spoiler is also known as one of Batman's allies and Robins in the comics, Stephanie Brown. But unlike some of the other Robins who came before her, she wasn't your typical orphan. Stephanie actually had a family, though not the most desirable of families. Her dad was actually known as the villain Clue Master. He basically created schemes that involved leaving clues that would lead his pursuant to him, if they were smart enough to figure it out. So kind of like the Riddler, but not the Riddler. <laughs> Basically like more of a B-list Riddler. Stephanie has even come up against her father in the past as a hero. That's actually where Spoiler gets her mantle. She became a hero to spoil her father's plans, hence the name Spoiler. Even though she might not be the most powerful of all the Robins, she has still been a protege of Batman's before in the comics. In the current continuity, she is well known for her connection to the Bat family being a part of Batman and Batwoman's team at one point, and also being affiliated with the Batgirls team, which includes Barbara Gordon and Cassandra Cain. Coming in at number 9, we have Damian Wayne, the son of Batman. Now, obviously Batman isn't a supervillain, but Damian's mother often fits the bill, as she's none other than Talia al Ghul, daughter of the Demon's Head and heir to the League of Shadows. Raised since birth to be an assassin, Damian was eventually left in the care of Batman, who would eventually be able to steer the boy in a more heroic direction. However, Damian will always have a little bit of his mother's dark training within him, and grappling with that darkness is a story that continues to play out in DC Comics and makes even a child like Damien a particularly powerful threat. Coming in at number 8, we have Nightcrawler, the son of Azazel. Now, both of these guys might be masters of teleportation, but that's unfortunately where the similarities end. While Nightcrawler is a kind and charming mutant fighting on the side of good with the X-Men, alongside being a devout Catholic, his father Azazel is the closest thing mutant kind has to a demon, hailing from a subspecies of mutant from before biblical times. Originally trapped within an alternate dimension, Azazel found himself bound to Earth because of his son and has been a consistent thorn in the X-Men's side ever since. And to make family matters even more complicated, it was eventually revealed that Nightcrawler's mother is actually the mutant Mystique, making him the child of two X-Men villains. Talk about awkward family reunions. Number 7, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is known for being one of the best martial artists and one of the most skilled fighters in the Marvel Universe. He has unique disciplines, skills, and even somewhat powers somewhat, that allow him to have complete control over his body and nervous system, allowing him to pull off all kinds of feats. He's also demonstrated a form of powers before with his chi sense in the comics, which seems to make him more aware at times when writers remember that this is a thing that they can draw on. Because yeah, it doesn't always exist, and I'm sure some people in the comments are going to be like, Shang-Chi doesn't have powers, but this is a thing, it happened before, I've seen it. For the most part though, he's just an amazing fighter, considered one of the best martial artists on Earth, and that is pretty much his strong suit. Shang-Chi's dad in the comics was Zhang Zhu, originally introduced as Marvel villain Fu Manchu. In the MCU, Shang-Chi's dad is also a villain, but instead is Zhu Wenwu, known by many names over the millennia, including the mock name Mandarin, when his likeness was appropriated and used to terrorize the world. Coming in at number 6, we have Nico Minoru. Now, technically all of the members of the Runaways are superheroes with supervillain parents. That's kind of their entire gimmick and, you know, the reason they're running away. But perhaps no one feels this more dramatically than Nico, whose parents are both dark wizards working for the Los Angeles supervillain group known as the Pride. Because of her lineage, Nico discovered that she has all of the abilities of a witch and is able to summon the incredibly powerful artifact known as the Staff of One whenever she is bleeding. Luckily, Nico decides to use this dark magic for the forces of good and has often used the Staff of One to protect the other members of the Runaways. Number 5, Toxin. Toxin hasn't always been a hero, more anti hero, really, like most famous seemingly heroic symbiotes out there. Toxin, however, is pretty pretty good considering that they are the child of the Carnage symbiote, who is known for being one of the most villainous creations around. Toxin has actually had to fight its inner urges at times to be 
a hero, but was guided for a while in a how to be a hero way by its first host, police officer Pat Mulligan. While Toxin hasn't always been a hero, they are back on the side of good with their current host, Bren Waters. Toxin was believed to be one of the most powerful symbiotes around as Carnage's offspring. Carnage is already known for being super strong and pretty indestructible, and it was believed that Toxin had the potential to be even stronger than both Venom and Carnage combined. Like its grandparent Venom and its parent Carnage, Toxin also possesses powers similar to Spider Man, such as Spider Sense and Webbing. Coming in at number four, we have Vision, the son of Ultron. Following the artificial intelligence known as Ultron's revolt against his creator, Hank Pym, Ultron decided he was going to create his own mechanical life and created a synthesoid named Vision, the most advanced android the world had ever seen with density changing powers that made the Vision incredibly powerful. Although initially fighting the Avengers at his creator's command, Vision eventually empathized with Earth's mightiest heroes and helped them defeat Ultron, becoming an essential member of the team in the process. Having even become capable of falling in love since then, Vision just goes to show how much further he's advanced than Ultron and blurs the lines between android and human. Number 3. Scarlet Witch While Scarlet Witch is often thought of as a false daughter of Magneto since it was revealed that they were not related by blood during the events of Axis, she still spent a good amount of her life with Magneto and her brother, and then another good chunk of it believing that the three of them were all family. Quicksilver, however, did remain as Wanda's brother in the comics, but it was revealed that their mutant origin was fabricated by the High Evolutionary for some, as of yet, I believe, unknown reason. The High Evolutionary just likes to play with people's origins, I guess, because that's one of his things. Wanda is still well known for being one of the most powerful witches and magic users in the realm of Marvel. And while she is not currently a mutant in the comics or the MCU, it doesn't mean she might not return to being one and to being Magneto's daughter in the future. After all, retcons can always be unretconned, and no retcon can really remove all the years of history those two have, at least. So we get to keep that. Coming in at number two, we have a second son of Ultron, Victor Mancha. Unlike the Vision, Victor was born intended to be a human and android hybrid, the result of an Ultron unit's head stealing the genetics of a woman that had found him in a junkyard. Designed with nanites, Victor is impossible to differentiate from a biological human, but was designed to activate as an EMP bomb as soon as he came into contact with another superpowered person. Ultron's plan was to use the boy as a sleeper agent who wasn't even aware he was a sleeper agent among the Avengers. Fortunately, Victor wound up becoming a member of the Runaways before he could cause any harm to the Avengers, using his super strength and enhanced intelligence to break free from Ultron's programming and become his own hero, capable of controlling both metal and electronics. Not bad for someone originally just intended to be a stealthy sleeper bomb. Number 1. Raven Raven is probably one of the most powerful magic users in all of DC Comics. A lot of her power actually she is forced to suppress as well, so there is that to consider, since so much of it is dark in origin. Raven is the daughter of the powerful demon Trigon. Because of this, she also has to struggle against giving into her emotions and being ruled by them, otherwise she could potentially turn dark and become corrupted by her father's influence. Raven can manipulate matter, time travel, astral project, teleport, and become intangible. She is also very aware of the emotions of others around her, meaning that she has to work extra hard to filter these out and not let them influence her, but also meaning it'd be really hard to lie to her. This also just goes to show how disciplined Raven is and must be. That's all the time we have for today, but if you enjoyed this video, why not hit the like button and the subscribe button. And if you want more videos like this, be sure to tell us your favorite character on this list in the comments below. I've been Josh Busker. And I'm Amanda McKnight. Thanks so much for watching and stay nerdy my friends.